Yo, 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 yo. What is good? What is good? What is good? <laughs> what is good? How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Let me get myself together over here real quick. Get myself together. What is good? What is good? What is good? Excuse me. We get a few people on here real quick, and then we're gonna um, have a good time. Yo, yo, yo! What's it? Uh, Virus beats. What's good? Uh, cold heat about to clock in. Okay. What's good? What's good? What is good? Everybody. Y'all can hear me good. <laughs> Y'all can hear me. What's good? Black A. What's good? Black Av. Black A. Whatever. <laughs> what's good? Good to see y'all on here, man. Good to see y'all on here. Ooh. Hold on. Something ain't right. I got my two little screens right here, so you know I'm trying to be like a, like a computer, uh, <laughs> like a real computer guy here. You know what I'm saying with the two screens and all this stuff going on. I got my big screen up here, but I need to. Hold on, what's going on? I want to be able to look up and see y'all rather than looking at the computer. What's good? Ah, there we go. There it is. <laughs> There it is. What up? What up? Robert Love, what's good? Seven Pain, Infinite Minds, what's good? Hemi, okay. Hen, hen me. Silver Duck, what's good, man? Mr. Sharp, Pearls Productions, Moa, what's good? So yeah, it's Monday. You know, I know how it is on Mondays, man. Y'all don't y'all don't really like to be on the tube like that on Mondays. Y'all like to get on the tube late on Mondays. <laughs> y'all be on the real late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying thank you Jonathan Weary thank you so much thank you douche what's good man oh you had to strip them floors down I know them things I know them things look like a mirror on them things now don't it dude <laughs> I haven't stripped floors in a minute but that's you have to have a real skill to know how to strip them especially them school floors did you have to do like just a regular school floors or like the gym Cause I know when they we uh I I used to watch the guys strip the gym floors and and man them things once they, once they stripped them and waxed them things woo things you look good so you know how to do all that shoot boy I wish you was on my side over here man I might have you come do my floors over here <laughs> oh you doing the gym floor ooh oh no you just saying that they look good yeah I I I, I don't know. <laughs> But I feel you. But yeah, man, we on here today, man. Appreciate everybody coming on here. Appreciate everybody uh, taking time out their day to come on my live or whatever. I want to talk a little bit about. Um. Oh, we. Oh, they, you contract the gym floors out. Oh, okay, okay. Why well, don't let you do that, man? They might will go ahead and pay you to do that, man. Get all that bread, man. Get that bread, douche. But um. Yeah, I definitely want to come on here and talk about something a lot of you guys asked me about. Y'all asked me about, uh, you know, about cheap equipment and should you get it or should you not you get it or should you save up for some stuff or whatever. And I just want to go over a few scenarios with you guys today and uh, just talk with you guys um, about that. Um, what's good? So it's good to see all you guys on there. And it's good to see you guys still being engaged and coming on here. Even when I'm not doing the beat review, even though the beat review is tomorrow night, uh, most likely it's going to be at 9.30 p.m. It just depends on what time they let my kids out of football practice. So it should be around it should be around uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I would love to see the congregation in there. Love to see y'all guys in there, guys and gals, you know what I'm saying? And uh, got to be politically correct now. But um, it'll be good to uh, 
uh, it'll be good to uh, to see y'all in there. <laughs> Do say I got senior to our pass. <laughs> I feel you on that. But um, it's but one thing a lot of you guys tend to talk about, of course, you know, brother EA Ski has talked about converters. Um, there's a lot of people talking about, you know, about how a lot of these new um, these new interfaces and stuff like that are really sounding very good nowadays. And they are. And to be truthfully honest with you, I came up in the early 2000s. So I've seen these interfaces become what they are at this moment right now. Um, and I've seen how much of a difference the new interfaces sound from the older interfaces. Um, I actually did a test. I had an old laptop. <laughs> I had one of my old um, uh, Mac laptops. And I still got my um, my inbox two that I bought in, like in 2005 and I hooked it up and I did some tests through it and with that and I did another test with my new, uh, with, well, actually I did a test with, uh, I did a test with this, the uh, the Scarlet uh, 2i2. This is the third generation. I got this a while back. And um, like this sounds great compared to what um, that Inbox 2 sounded like. And uh, I wish I had my Digio 3 because I actually did a lot of stuff on my Digio 3 back then. Um, and... I don't know. Like it, it most of that stuff kind of sounded the same. Like, you know, unless you had like that high end HD system, most of that stuff sounded the same. You know what I'm saying? And I think that with the amount of um consumption going on in the music business right now with a lot of home studios and stuff, I think it forced a lot of these uh manufacturers to actually make better products. Even the cheap stuff, even like the no name cheap branded stuff that's coming out of like Japan and China, that stuff sounds real good too. Uh, what you got, Black A? What you got, Black F? Quick question: Me coming from MPC One, would you recommend upgrading to MPC X or the MPC Key Sixty One? That's a personal thing, brother. <laughs> that's a personal thing. Um, I personally, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of like a tie with me, man, to be honest with you. But the uh, it's all depending if you're getting the MPC X Special Edition or the MPC Key 61. Um, I mean, uh, or the regular MPC X. If you're getting the MPC X Special Edition, I can see you doing that. But the MPC Key 61 comes with all of the sounds. And I think the MPC uh, X Special Edition comes with the sounds, too. So it's just all depending on what you want to spend. Um, they both really can't leave the studio. So I like that MPC Key 61. I like how it sounds. Just to me, me personally, I like how it sounds. So that's just the way I that's the way I roll right now. But um, but getting back on the topic, basically, you don't need to have really expensive gear right now. Now, I do have expensive gear because I do a lot of mixing and I do a lot of my own products and I like the way how this UAD stuff sounds. Like I have a, uh, I actually have a uh, Apollo X6. I got an Apollo X4 over here and I have an Apollo 8 over at the studio downtown. I have some Focusrite stuff. I have a lot of stuff that is good. But do you have to have an expensive gear? No, you do not need to have expensive gear. You can actually get some cheap gear and make a hit record. And to be honest with you, my biggest record, and I keep telling you guys this, my biggest record was made on a Mbox 3. Biggest record was made on a Mbox 3, and I finished off the mixing on that record on a Digi 2 Okay. Inbox 3. Now, the only thing that we did use with that Inbox 3 is we had a U87 microphone. It was a U87 microphone hooked up to it, but it was actually hooked up to it directly. It didn't have any preamps, any compressors, all that stuff, nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then the mix that I finished that night is the same mix that is on iTunes right now. So there's a song right now called Watch Me Whip, Watch Me Nay Nay that I produced, I recorded. I mixed, <laughs> did ba I used nothing but Waves plugins. I didn't have a compressor going in, so I used the R compressor, and I used the uh, SSL channel. I had that going through a aux track, 
And then I had the aux track going to the record track, and I had just a kiss of compression going in, and I didn't even turn on anything inside of the SSL. I just put the SSL uh, channel strip on there, didn't touch nothing on it, just wanted to kind of get that SSL sound. Ran that through and basically ran that in there, did the song, took about 45 minutes to record it. I took it home, moved some things around, got it sounding the way I wanted to sound, printed it, um, didn't even print it like in the session. I just exported it and he uploaded it. And that same version that you guys hear on iTunes has, as of today, it has 1.9 billion views on YouTube and millions and millions of views everywhere else. And the mix that you hear on iTunes is my actual mix from that night. The record label never changed that mix. Um, Jason Joshua did mix it, however. He did mix it. I approved that mix. He sent me over the stems. I got the stems for that. The mix that he has is on the uh, the mix that he has is on the video. So the the video I got it confused. Hold on. My, my bad. The video that is on YouTube, that's the Jason Joshua mix. The mix that I have on that is that, that I did is on iTunes. So if you want to compare the mixes, you can compare the mixes. Jason did an excellent job. He got that kick really hitting really good. It sounds really good. And, uh, you know, some people are like, hey, I like your mix, Bolo. I like Jason's mix. You know, Jason's was a huge mix and then we end up getting it mastered and everything the mix that is on itunes is not mastered all i did was put a uh, waves l2 on that and that's it <laughs> that is it so i didn't really use that much on that mix either all i did was use like a r compressor i used a um, r eq from waves and i used an r deesser on the aux track I use one aux track, and I think I might use the SSL on one, on that thing. I got to pull up the session, and then from there, um, I didn't add anything to none of the actual channels. There was no compressors, no nothing. Everything just fed through one aux track. Then I had another aux track with a reverb, and I had another aux track with a delay, and we ran everything through the master, and I was done. And so if you guys want to check that out, you can go to iTunes and you can listen to that version on iTunes. Don't know what Jason used, but he did an excellent job on that mix. And I did everything on an Mbox 3. Made sure that the levels wasn't peaking. I made sure everything was good. The mix came out clean. Everything sounded great. Everything sounded great. You know what I'm saying? And... Uh, the, the crazy thing about it is the more and more expensive equipment that I got, the more and more um, I started noticing, you know, little things, but it wasn't like noticeable things. It was like, oh, my goodness. You know what I'm saying? I truthfully honest, I'm going to tell you this. I really got the Apollos and everything strictly because of the name i got it because of universal audio because back in the day when i did have my inbox too when i first got pro tools i actually bought a universal audio card thanks to my guy brian tyson he's a mixer engineer in tampa florida he's actually was the engineer that engineered all the plows uh the rap the rap artist plows he he engineered all of his first albums plows would record he engineered all the I, I, uh, albums he did a few mixes but he engineered those albums and he used Cubase at the time, but he had the universal audio stuff in there and he had the card too as well. And I went ahead and bought the card for like five or 600 bucks. It was that PCI card. I bought that card and uh, that was a game changer for me. Cause I had the EQ at that time. I had the Cambridge EQ. I had the LA 2A compressor and I had some other stuff and I really couldn't use it cause computers back then wasn't that <laughs> good. You had to really have a beefy computer. But, you know, the computers back in 05 were nothing like the computers now. and uh, But I did use it. I did use it, like especially like the, the reverb and stuff like that. I used like the, I forgot the verb that came with it. That It came with that as well. And uh, I just knew that Universal Audio had that sound. So I went in, I had like a voucher and I bought some other stuff as well. 
But um, I when I finally got the bread to really get the Universal Audio stuff, I got it strictly off of just knowing how good the plugins were. So I knew that the plugins were that good. I knew that the interfaces were going to be good, and they 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 didn't. You know, they didn't disappoint me. I would say. So I just started buying a whole bunch of Universal Audio stuff whenever they had anything that was like a rack mount unit or whatever. I got it, and then in between that time, I bought a lot of cheaper gear. Because at that time, I was actually on the road um, with Silento, and we would record on the road. So I had the, uh, I had the, uh, which one was it? Uh, Jeez, I keep forgetting. I had the Steinberg. I had the Steinberg one. We actually recorded, I actually recorded a song called Spotlight that he was on, on that uh, Steinberg interface. That was cool. I wasn't really too keen with that Steinberg interface. But um, after that, I was using what interface I had a um, I was using that most of the time on the road, but then I got a then I got the focus right interface, but it was the second generation. And then pretty much where I got off the road, I was using that, you know, like going out of town. I was taking that with me. And then from there, once I got here and I was kind of more stationary and I was doing a lot of stuff on my iPad, I went ahead and got the, uh, the Scarlet, the um uh, the, you know, the Scarlet one I just showed you just now, I got, you know, this one right here. And uh, this right here sounds very good. I don't I don't think y'all understand how good this thing sounds. OK, this thing right here sounds very, very, very good. Very good. OK, very good. I actually had a test on my page with these. They sound very good. If you if you guys are not trying to break the bank and you're trying to get a good sound, just go ahead and get this. OK, they sound good. There's not much to hook up. They sound good. Pretty much any of the focus right stuff right now sounds good. Going into the focus right stuff sounds great. It's actually playing it back is where you have, I guess, a little bit of, of a quality difference. OK. I can tell the stereo field is not as big as it is on my Apollo and all that stuff. But I'm going to say this about a few other things. This right here. This right here. The SSL. The SSL 2. I got this. I bought this during COVID. I think I bought this in uh, like 2021 or something like that. I bought that. And that sounds incredible. I actually got it because I seen it at NAM, and I always want to get something like an SSL type of a thing. And it sounds incredible. I think I bought it for like a little over 200 bucks too at that time, right when they first came out. I got it. Sounds incredible. Um, and like I said before, going into it sounds great. I used to track all of my stuff from my MPC into it. Sounds great. Sounds great. But, of course, when you play it back, that's when I started noticing that it lacked a little bit in the output. So I had to compensate for a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I had to compensate for it. But was it like a huge noticeable difference? Like, oh, my God, my mix sounded terrible? No. No, 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 no. It was a few things I had to compensate. But once I did the car test and everything, I was all good. Everything was all good. I had no problems, no issues, no nothing. It was all good, okay? And then I bought one more thing, and I actually bought this because I wanted to do, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, I couldn't really get in contact with him at the time, but I wanted to do a video on it, so I bought it, and I, in all intentions, I was going to send it right back, but it sounded so good, I just kept it. I got this, okay? I got the Audient ID14. This is the uh, third generation. Uh, or the MK2, second generation. It's the MK2 or whatever. It's one of them. But this thing is amazing. Amazing. And like I'm going to say again, going into the input sounds great. It was how it was coming out. So what are, what are, we, what are we saying here? What are we saying here? What I was, what are we saying here is, you can use a good quality mic. Hell, you can use the Timu mic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, the little three dollar Timu mic. You know what I'm saying. You can use that. 
you know? Or you can use some high-end mics, like a U87. Excuse me, a U87, you can use that. You can use a C414. You can use a TLM103. You can use all that stuff, and it's going to sound good going in. You can use a, a, a Rode NT1A. You can use the Rode mics. You can use the bottom mics. You can use whatever. It's going to sound good because all of those have great pre's going in. The thing that separates those from the other stuff like the UAD stuff and, you know, some of the RME stuff and um, um, some of uh, what's the other one everybody uses? Ah, I can't remember the name and they make some really good Apogee stuff. They sound good. I actually had an Apogee. Oh, that's the other interface I was using on the road. I had an Apogee interface on the road too. But I'm talking about the rack mount Apogees, the big boys. The difference between a lot of that stuff that I've noticed has been the output of that stuff. The stereo field is wider. You can hear certain things in that, but it's only if you're searching for it. That's what people, yeah, the Bluebird mic. Thank you, uh, 318J Coop. Um, the, the, the stereo field is big and the, the output is good, but you have to search for that. And this is what people don't understand. When you're mixing and you're listening to the output, a lot of times you're searching for things to hear in that output and you're listening for it. If you're not searching for it, you're not really listening for it unless it just pops out at you. And that's the difference between the, the, the more uh, cheaper gear than expensive gear. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I have a I have an Apollo X6 and I have an Apollo X4. The Apollo X6 is the rack mount unit and the X4 is not a rack mount unit. I actually have this mic, which is the, um, this is the Lawton Audio uh, mic. Uh, well, I just did a, uh, what's like the, the two something? This is like the condenser mic that faces forward. I don't even use the, uh, the SM7B anymore. I use this. This one sounds really good as you guys can hear. Um, I got this going into directly into my uh, into the X4, the Universal Audio X4, and it sounds great. But I do have to say this. I don't know if it's just me. I could be tripping. I get great mixes off the X4 and everything, but I feel like the rack mount units sound better. I feel like the the Universal Audio rack mount units have a better sound coming out of them. It could just be a mind thing because they're supposedly supposed to use the same things, but... To me, I think that the rack mount units actually sound better. Okay, now these are some of the these are some of the things that I use, but there are some other companies that make some really go really dope stuff. You know, of course, R and makes some really dope stuff. Tascam, the field recorders, the ones that are made for you to take on the road with you. That like the one they got for like three hundred bucks that has like uh, four inputs, like two stereo inputs on it. That thing is incredible. I'm actually going to order that. So when I do my videos, like say for instance, I'm doing my tutorial videos, I'm going to have my mic going through the task cam and having all the audio come out through the UAD stuff and then edit it that way. You know what I'm saying? Task cam has a lot, a lot of great stuff. Rode has a lot of good interfaces that's really supposed to be used for certain things, but they make some really dope interfaces. But for all of these interfaces I have right here, the one that I can travel with the most and the one that gives me a really good sound is this. And I know with the right amount of mixing, the, the way I set up my mics, the way I do everything, I know I can get me a great sound out of this. I know I can make a hit record out of this. You know what I'm saying? And not necessarily a hit record. I know I can make me a very good record and I can play it back on other systems and people are going to be like, yo, what did you use? I use this. I use this. You know what I'm saying? What's good, Andy Milligan? What's good? M Keys, what's good? Hey, hey, yeah, we got all these people on here, man. Y'all run these likes up, man. I'm over here trying to get some information. Y'all run these likes up. Run these likes up, you guys. Go ahead and take one second out of your day, one measly second out of your day, and go ahead and click that thumbs up button or click the thumbs down button. You know, y'all you, guys know I really don't care. But just at least hit something, man. Let me know you're here. Thank you for the guys who are already hitting it. Let's run these likes up. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for letting me know. I've been over here just talking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all go ahead and hit those likes up. Hit those likes up for me, please. Y'all go ahead and hit those likes up. Hit those likes up. 
You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys so much. Thanks for everybody coming on here from the congregation. Thank you guys so much for just being on here. And if this is your first time on here, I'm Bolo the producer, and they call me Bishop Bolo over here, man. You know, I grew up in the church, so it's all good. We all part of the Bolo congregation over here. Thank you guys. Thank you all you guys that are hitting the like button, man. Thank you guys so much. I might need to give some of these away, man, because I, I don't use them. But I don't know, man. I don't, you know, you can't just give away equipment. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I'll probably give it to, like, my like my cousins or something like that. Like what I did last, like what I did the other night. Um, you know what I'm saying? Was out with my girl, and we went over to go see some family or whatever and got to see the little cuz. And he told me that he's making beats on the MPC stuff. And I was like, oh, you making beats on the MPC stuff? Let me run to the house. Let me grab you something. And I ended up giving him the... Uh, the uh, the MPC studio, the MK2 one, the one I've been complaining about, but I gave it to him and he is excited. I'm glad I'm glad he he likes it. He's already been working on it from like from what I hear. And I'm gonna check up on him and make sure he's straight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh I'd rather just probably give it to people like people who actually need it, like to kids and stuff like that. And I'll do like some keyboards and MIDI controllers to all y'all old guys that are on here. <laughs> Hundred likes a giveaway. Uh well actually I'm doing a giveaway on my uh on my Twitcher on the Twitch, so you guys can go ahead and go over to Twitch and then uh you you subscribe once I get to a thousand subscribers I'm probably gonna give away a a keyboard, like a MIDI keyboard or something. Uh most likely that uh I got that FL keyboard the new one the 49 that came out I might give that away because I really, I really don't use it that much, but it's cool though it's cool, but hey one more thing though and I got to say this, <laughs> you know I'm an affiliate guy. And I know y'all pretty much know what affiliates I use. If y'all guys know the affiliates I'm about to say, y'all go ahead and leave it in the comment section because, you know, I always got to give a shout out to, you know, the affiliates who who help me out and uh, who kind of keeps the channel kind of going. And, you know, they send me a lot of stuff and, you know, and I can go ahead and, and have enough content for you guys. So if you guys know the affiliates I'm about to say, y'all go ahead and leave it in the comment section. <laughs> y'all go ahead and leave it in the comment section. Last time y'all got it. A lot, a lot of y'all got it last time, for real. But y'all go ahead and continue to hit those likes up for me if you don't mind, please. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I'm going to hit kick, too. <laughs> y'all know. Zounds, zounds, zounds. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all already know. If you guys need any of these equipments, as my homeboy would say, equipments, if you guys need any equipment, y'all make sure y'all go and click my link in the description and head over to Zounds.com. They have a whole bunch of stuff on the site, just like what I showed you guys, all the, the all the interfaces. They have those that you can get with no credit or background check. <coughs> For real. So if you guys want to get some equipment today, you can go ahead and get some equipment today without no credit or background check. You just need a credit or debit card so they can take the money out of the account and you can just pay it off over time. And, of course, analog cases. What's good, EA Ski? What's good, man? Of course, analog cases. Analog cases, if you need to protect your gear, just go ahead and check out analog cases. They have a ton of stuff. Just click on that link, and uh, you can check out and see what they got. I'm going to tell you right now, the reason why I go so hard for them is because uh, I did have a situation where I messed up some stuff, and uh, they, they got me some stuff over and I can say that my equipment is in good hands right now because I can put everything up. I can stack all the cases up, and I'm good. Um, check that out. And, hey, another thing, if you guys need some good quality drums, make sure you guys go ahead and get my drum kits as well. They sound good. They're very cheap. And uh, the cheapest on the market for somebody who's got placements and stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, most of them are 10 bucks. I think my last one was 14 bucks, 15 bucks. Y'all go ahead and support me and, and, you know, and check out those drum kits as well on my website. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So y'all y'all pretty much knew what time it was with that. <laughs> y'all pretty much knew what time it was with that. But like I was saying before, even with this cheaper gear, it sounds a lot better than a lot of the stuff that came out back then. And you can get a hit record done. Like me, I got a hit record done off of a Mbox 3, which, to tell you the truth, that Mbox 3 actually sounded very good very good it had decent converters it had decent converters in it and if you guys do not have your converter t-shirts make sure you guys go holla at ea ski and get your converter t-shirts ski you still got them t-shirts on deck man <laughs> you know what i'm saying 
Make sure you guys go ahead and get those converter T-shirts from Brother Ski, man. Y'all go ahead. I can't call him Brother Ski. I got to call him Master Ski, man, because, you know, when Ski when Ski be on the road sometimes, he'll have them mixes online, and, and you can hear the mixes just punch through your phone, man. It's just like a Mike Tyson punch through the phone, man. <laughs> so, you know, yes, these newer, uh, a lot of these newer things have, uh, <laughs> I got you, Ski. A lot of these newer um, um, interfaces have great, Great converters in them for the price. I'm going to say that. Now, even with the Apollo stuff, the Apollo stuff is good. It's a con- it is the top supposed to be the top pro grade, and they have very good converters in it. They're not the best, but they have some of the top of the line converters in it, and it's just basically a few things that can be upgraded. And uh, you know, you can go ahead and go to Black Line. They can upgrade a few things in it to get it sound a little bit better. But they sound great right out of the box. That's why I love using the, uh, the the Universal Audio stuff. Now, they say the Apple G converters are a little bit better. I've heard that. You know what I'm saying? I've heard that. But, um, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, just a, I'm just a UAD type of a guy, okay? So, um... A lot of times what people tend to think is this, and I'm glad we got Ski on here, and Ski, you can kind of reiterate this to a lot of people. Just because something has good converters and it's expensive or if it's even inexpensive, just because that all of that stuff is in there, you have everything, you have all the best gear, you have all that, still does not mean that you cannot fuck it up. And I, I hate to cuss on here, but... You can still mess it up. You can still mess it up by not knowing what you're doing. And the simplest thing I get, sometimes people like today, it was a guy who sent me uh, some stuff today and he was like, can you check out my stuff? And a lot of times I don't listen to unsolicited stuff, but I was kind of waiting for some stuff to get done and he played it for me. And man, oh man, I got so upset because of the stuff that he said he was using. It did not sound the way it's supposed to be sounding. This man basically listed off $10,000 worth of equipment, and I had to basically tell him it's no way possible that you use that stuff and it sounds like that. Because even just with it being played dry without any other effects added to it in, in the software, whatever, dry, it would have sounded better than, than what it was. No EQ, no nothing. But you got people out here that think that just because you buy this expensive stuff, that it's going to make your sound better. It's not if you do not know what you're doing. If you do get this type of equipment, you need to know at least the basis of what needs to be done. That's why I tell a lot of you guys, you do not need this expensive equipment. And this is why. The thing with that cheaper equipment is, since you're not getting that top grade sound, it's going to be certain things that are going to be masked, masked over that M M A S K E D masked over that to where you try to, they, they, a lot of times with that cheaper stuff, you try to get a high fidelity sound, almost like a stereo type of a sound to where they're just trying to make things sound good. When you put some in it, it's like, Oh, it does sound good. But then you put in the car, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know people on the SSL and it sounds like trash. Like, just because, you know, you, you can have all the most expensive stuff, but if you don't know what you're doing with it, you're going to mess it up. A lot of times when I tell people, less is better. If you're on something and you're new on it, don't try to go overboard and get a uh, you know a manly compressor and try to compress the hell out of it or EQ and all this stuff like that. When Usually when you have this type of stuff, the more expensive stuff, it is about small moves, small EQing, small this, small compression, a little bit of compression, this, that, whatever. And that's what makes that stuff sound good because you're using it. You're using it to its ability because this is one thing that people have to understand. When you're EQing something, that means you're changing the frequency of what that was. And. A lot of times what I tell people, and you got to understand what I'm coming at is you're actually destroying the sound to make it sound better to fit. 
So, yes, you might have a U87 microphone. It sounds good, but we all know if you just leave a U87 just how it is, you're still going to have mic rumble. You're still going to have, you know, certain things depending on how the song is. I have been in sessions where people have just used U87. They maybe rolled off maybe 60 hertz, and everything sounded great. Like me, I got my U87. And, I, and you know, and sometimes I'll – I listen to it and I'm like, dang, that might, it's not sounding good for this song. So what I do is I got the, uh, the Lewitt microphone over here. I just got that the other day with the tube in it. Sounds incredible. I'm going to be doing a video on that as well with another R&B singer. Sounded incredible by itself just running through my Avalon 737. And truth be told, if anybody has an Avalon 737, the main thing they always tell you about an Avalon 737 is don't over compress it. Don't even use the EQs in it. <laughs> Just let everything run through. Turn the EQs on. Turn the compression on. Compress it very lightly and let it just do its thing. Let the tubes do its thing. That's the main thing that they always tell you about an Avalon 737. Just let it do its thing. And it's the same way even with this cheaper gear. Let the cheap gear just do its thing because that's why it is cheap. It just has certain things in it to where it's going to sound good. However, you're going to have to do the car test. You're going to have to do the playback test. You're going to have to know how this thing sounds once it leaves the studio. Because I know a lot of y'all, you know what I'm saying, a lot of y'all will sit here and and, you know, get this stuff and think just because it sounds like this in the studio is good. Because, you know, most of the times if you guys got cheaper audio interfaces, you probably have cheaper speakers as well. You probably have cheaper cords as well. You probably might have cheaper mics as well. And then you're trying to look for this quality, quality sound. You're trying to listen. Oh, I'm trying to sound like how uh, everybody sounds on the radio. The reason why you're not sounding like that is because you're not getting your stuff ran through a certain way. Now, you can get that sound using it. You can. I did it. You know what I'm saying? I did it. However, I had the knowledge to know, okay, I don't have I don't have the certain compressor, so let me go ahead and run an aux track, run the mic line in, and let me use this R compressor from Waze, and then let me use this SSL, slap those plugins on it, and let it run through that so I can try to give it, I can try to emulate what that chain would be, what I would use. And then when I got it to sound in the way I wanted to sound, I was I was I was pretty much good from that point because I like to record with compression in. I like to tame my 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 mic signal coming in rather than it just being all over the place because then from there, I don't have to slam it with a whole bunch of compressors from that point. And then I don't have to go ahead and like super EQ it and stuff like that because a lot of that stuff is going to be tamed. I don't know about that, Woody. I, the, the, the Apollos are not overrated. I think the I think the early ones, like the uh, the the like the uh, the one that came out like twenty fifteen, like the uh, the single core ones and all that stuff. Yeah, but the Apollos have always given me good quality, and they they've, they've always given me uh, like that extra step of quality that I that I would like to hear. It just it just it gave me that. Um, but. I will say this. This right here is a beast. This right here is a beast. A beast. Okay. I used this one time in a session. Uh, one time in the session was at my guy's spot and he was just kind of like setting up. He had, He has a tons of gear, but... The room was done. Everything was done. He just didn't get everything in at the time, but I still want to kind of run the session. So I took that down there. And at the time he had, um, he had what speakers he had. He, Oh, he actually had some, um, JBLs. He had the JBL eights. Um, you know, he had those JBL eights and the JBLs. I ran it through the JBLs. The room was tuned really nice. I did the whole session just off of that. And, you know, of course I did it through pro tools and everything. And, to this day, he still talks about like, man, after that session, I went ahead and bought one of those things. He says, and a lot of times, like when the first couple of sessions were coming in, I was using that. And then when I got the other equipment, people were asking, it sounds a little different. What happened to that other sound? And I actually, he said in his B room, he actually uses that in his B room 
And a lot of people, you know, rent out that B room because they like the sound of that SSL. They like it. You know what I'm saying? But you, of course, you have to know how it is. Like with certain, with them, with them SSLs, especially with them JBLs, inside of the room, it may sound like the high end may be too loud. You know what I'm saying? But in all actuality, it might not be that loud. You know what I'm saying? It's all depending on how you get, you know, how you got your speakers and everything set. Depending on the room, you might have to cut down the high end of your speakers. You might have to cut down the lows on your speakers, especially if they're close to a wall or something like that. And it's not really like a tame type of room. You have to know how to tame your room so you don't have to do the car test every single time. Like I can take my SSL because I've had in this room for so long and I can say, OK, this thing sounds pretty decent to me. I think it's going to sound decent inside the car. And you'll hear it and you'll be like, uh, OK, I might need to turn the bass down. And a lot of times when we're in these situations, it's a bass situation. It's a situation where the bass may be a little too loud. The bass may be a little too low. You take in the car. You try to compare it because you listen to it in the room. It's one thing, but it's just something about that car. Something about that car that just makes things so much better. You know what I'm saying? Just something about it. But what I tend to tell people a lot is, uh, 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 bad man, uh, uh, bad beat man, <laughs> Sonar Works, I had it. They sent it over to me. I did not like that. I did the whole room test thing where they sh- you had you placed the mic all around all that. Nah, I I, I couldn't I couldn't get jiggy with that. I, I I think I just gave it to my neighbor or something like that. I I I did not like that Sonar Works thing. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. I even like the headphone one because it just it it, it wasn't right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't right. It wasn't right at all. But um. But to each his own. Maybe some people might have liked it, but I didn't. I didn't really like the. Uh, I didn't really like the Sonar Works one. It it just wasn't my thing. <laughs> it just wasn't my thing like that. But um. But I I learned to just know what my room is, and I learned my equipment. Every single last pieces of equipment I know. Equipments again. Every last piece of the equipment that I have here, I know how the output is going to be. You know what I'm saying? I know how the SSL is going to sound. I know how the focus ride is going to sound. I know how all this stuff is going to sound. You know what I'm saying? And you can get really good sound out of it. So don't don't fool yourself into thinking, if you only have $800 in your budget, I know you guys want to have all the sprinkly stuff. I know you guys want to have all the stuff that just, you know, somebody walks to the studio and they're like, oh, my God. You have all the good stuff, man. You know, trust me, your sound will outweigh all of that. Your sound will outweigh all of that. So if you know what you're using, if you know what you're using and you make it sound good, people will come back. People will continue to listen to what you have. The key is, that's right. The key is knowing your equipment. You can buy anything these days and a lot of this stuff sounds good. You got to understand something. The most revered speakers that we see, the ones that everybody looks at, the ones like, oh, my goodness, is in our generation, the NS10s. All right? The old school NS10s in them boxes. People don't understand that those NS10s were not originally studio speakers. Those were hi-fi speakers. It was one engineer who just really liked how those speakers sound and he was taking them from studio to studio and he was doing his mixes on those NS10s. And then next thing you know, people liked how the mixes was because the NS10s sounded so bad that if it sounded good, especially in the mid-range, they would know that they had something pretty decent. So that's why the NS10s became such a big thing. And then next thing you know, it started selling out because the NS10s wasn't even that expensive back then. But then now it's like once people got a hold of them, it was like, oh, these little high five speakers can really translate when it comes to the mid range. Like if it sounds good on the tens, it sounds good everywhere else. And then they try to do some modifications and all this other type and the NS ten S's and all that stuff. And you had to, you know, do the little thing with the tweeter and all that stuff like that. But they were never made to be studio speakers. So right now, like I use, I use the Focusrite Alpha Eights. You know what I'm saying? I know the I know how my focus right alpha eights sound. Do I need to get any other speakers? No. 
My room doesn't need anything bigger. It doesn't need nothing smaller. I know how my eight sound on the mix. You know what I'm saying? And they sound great. Along with my Apollos. They sound great. Now I do have a monitor ST from uh from uh Dangerous Music. I did have the Presonus Central Station, Monitor Station, whatever one. I had both of those, matter of fact. I still I got those at the studio now, uh downtown. Is it as clean as a monitor ST? No, it's not as clean, but I know how it sounds. If it sounds good, it sounds good. And I try to tell people, if stuff sounds good, it sounds good. If it sounds good, it sounds good. It's as simple as that. Before you go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff, learn. The KRKs, if this sound, if it sounds good in the KRKs, it sounds good. Every speaker is going to give you something different. You have to learn it. No matter if you break it in or not, even if you get it very expensive speakers that gives you that really high end range. If you're not, if your ears are not tuned for what you're listening to, you don't know what you're listening to. That's why a lot of speakers have different speakers, because if you can get everything sounding pretty decent on every single speaker, you know that you got something sounding pretty good. But is your degree of sounding good the same degree of my sounding good? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like everybody can build something, <laughs> but does it look good when it gets done? Everybody can cook. You can throw something in the refrigerator. I mean, you can throw something in, you can take something out of the refrigerator and throw it into the oven, but is it done the right way? Is it seasoned the right way? You know what I'm saying? So everybody, you know, everybody has different tastes. That's why you have enough stuff out here so you guys can, you know, you guys can uh take a listen to this or you know, you can rock with this or rock with that. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it works. Like right now, even some of these speakers on these new uh on these new uh MacBooks, these are crazy. The headphone output on these new MacBooks, the M1 and M2s are phenomenal. They did a phenomenal job with the, just the headphone outs on this Mac. And don't let me get to talking about the mic that's on these new Mac MacBook Pros. Incredible. You can record a whole song using this mic on the MacBook and the headphones because the headphones, you can use 250 ohm headphones on it and it'll give it the power. They have an excellent output on here. You can hook these right up to your speakers and do a mix directly from your MacBook right now. That's how far technology has gone. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. The real test, no matter what you use, is does it sound good? Doesn't matter what you use. It's just that the more expensive stuff will get you there a little bit faster, in my sense. It's all about speed. You can get a great sound out of anything. It's just that certain things are going to be missing from that sound when you're trying to play it back. But if you do a car test and come back, be like, okay, let me just turn it up in here because in the studio it might sound right because the outputs might not be right. You know what I'm saying? But in the car test, you can say, okay, hmm. Or the club test, you might say, oh, I might need to turn that down or this, that, whatever. I've seen a mixing engineer mix a whole album off of uh, off of an Apple G duet interface. I've seen this. He mixed one of my songs off of it. And the damn mix came out sounding incredible. And he was fine with his Apple G interface. Fine with it. You know what I'm saying? So... He knew what it sounded like. He went into the room. He played a few records. He already mixed out the interface, and he mixed it right on his laptop on his Apple G interface, and it sounded incredible. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's it's a lot of things that we can use. It's a lot of things that, that you know, as, as producers, engineers, everything, like, it's a lot of stuff that we can add and make better. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that we can add and make better to our mixes. But one thing that we have to do is understand that, number one, when we are using these, we have to be careful. We can't overload the mic pre's on here. When we're using cheaper gear, can't overload it. But the thing that another thing we can't do is we can't go too low because now you're dealing with a noise floor situation. That's the difference between a lot of this stuff is a noise floor situation. So if you're recording it in too loud, you're going to, have to deal with distortion. 
If you're recording in too low, you got to deal with the noise floor where all the noise is down there. And then if you and then when you try to raise it up, you're raising up the actual signal and the noise that's in there. That's why when you have like a Apollo or Apple G, the noise floor is so low that you can record low and then turn it up and you still won't really hear that much noise in there. That's the difference. And you need better components to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. But some people don't care about the noise floor because you got to think, you know, it was back in the day when you used to listen to it, when you used to run stuff through a, a ton of equipment, you used to hear you used to hear that hum and you can hear that hum in a lot of recordings. You know, even through, you know, like when the guys will be singing, if you listen to old acapellas, you can hear all of that equipment and stuff going through it. But then they will have um, they will have the, uh, 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 you know, the mic things where they cut off the signal when the mic is not in. I, 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 my, my brain is farting right now. But it, the only time you want to hear it is when that that uh, that uh, thing with the gate, my, there it is, the mic gate, you'll hear that gate shut off and you wouldn't hear nothing. But then they start singing back again. You hear all that noise in there. So that's why they had those gates so you wouldn't be able to hear the noise when people weren't singing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The mic gates. Um, but, you know, a gate only helps it when the person stops singing or rapping or whatever. But while they're doing it, that gate is wide open and you hear all of that stuff. Now, you can use some suppression stuff in there. You can kind of ground things a little different. But those signals back in the day were not super duper clean. <laughs> it's like signals. You would hear humming. All type of stuff in that. And that's what you would hear on some of this cheaper gear. You know what I'm saying? That's why uh, it's it's very imperative that you get the right levels when you record in. Even with your compressors, because they will have a noise floor in it because it's it's, it's plugged into something. Even going into your interfaces, they have a no, noise floor. Even your mic might have a certain type of a noise in that. Your mic cables, all of that stuff takes a part of, you know, it all takes account of trying to get the best sound possible okay get the best sound possible like even now when i do my mixes i mix on these headphones right here these are the uh, austrian audios these headphones are incredible you know what i'm saying these are the uh hix 65s um they're like 400 bucks like 450 or something like that incredible headphones the open backs these things are incredible and I use these, like, if I'm trying to find something in the mix, like, if I'm trying to, okay, there's something back here that I need to kind of move or what I got to do, I use those to try to get that actual, that actual, you know, that stereo field and everything. And I only use it for a short bit of time because I, like I like to mix on, on speakers. So for all of you guys, for all of you guys who are on here and you're thinking about upgrading your stuff and you already might have, like, you know, the SSL or you already have the Apple G stuff already. I mean, not the Apple G, but the audience stuff. Or, or if you guys have any one of these, any one of these uh, focus rights, I don't care if you got the rack mount or whatever, they, they pretty much all work the same. They just charge by how many channels you got. That's pretty much it. All of the Focusrite stuff sounds the same. All of it. <laughs> Until you get to that higher, the HD stuff, you start hearing a little difference. But all of like the Scarlet stuff like that and, you know, all the way up to like the 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 two I the, the 20 input one or whatever, they all pretty much are the same. Same stuff in it, going to give you the same sound. What I'm telling you guys is, you know, I try to do all the affiliates and I'm trying to sell you this, I'm trying to sell you that, but I'm going to keep, Bolo's going to keep it real with you. You don't need it if you don't need it, <laughs> okay? I'm going to say it again. You don't need it if you don't need it. I'm going to say it one last time. You don't need it if you don't need it. One last time. You don't need it if you don't need it. If your mixes and everything are sounding good on your focus right and people are like, man, where are you getting the mixes from? This, that, whatever. Keep that. Keep that. Uh, you never answered my question about the Mo. The Mo2 is good too. 
All that stuff is good. You know what I'm saying? M audio stuff is good. A lot of that stuff is good. You know what I'm saying? Like all that, all the newer stuff right now is good. All the new stuff right now is very good. So you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? You'll be good. You will be good. Do the number of outs matter? Nah, not really. You know what I'm saying? I, I will say this. I will say this. Two things matter to me. Number one is a good preamp. And I would say this. I would say get a preamp slash compressor with it. Because that way you'll have a two-in-one combo. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a DBX. Um, I don't care if it's a... Uh, uh, what's that one on uh, on Amazon that they sell that a lot of people get? It's this one. It's a tube. It's a tube one on Amazon. Hold on, let me look this up. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna get y'all some sauce. This thing sounds incredible for the price. Um, uh, what I, I, y'all y'all probably know which one I'm talking about. Um, uh, uh, what's what's it called? It's on Amazon. Now I got a 737. It's on Amazon. Now they have the DBX. Um, of course they have some bearings and stuff in. What is this? It's the uh, it's the Art, the Art Pro VLA2. It's the two channel uh, compressor. They got it. Some places got it on here for like three forty nine. They used to be like four hundred or whatever. That Art compressor is dope. It's a tube compressor. That is dope. Okay. Tube compressor. And it's like a whole preamp. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's a, it's a two channel. It's like a bass compressor on there. Dope. Okay. That channel strip, the art channel strip is dope. Yes, that's right. Just call me Q. That art channel strip is dope. So if you guys want to get something to go in first, like get you a decent mic. I'll say get you get you a mic that's like maybe two hundred bucks or better. Get you a good mic cable, a good decent mic cable. Try to spend about fifty sixty bucks on a good mic cable, at least that that's got the good thread in it. Put that inside of that that uh that preamp compressor. Have a little compression going in. Have a quarter inch jack coming out of that compressor. If 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 it does have a quarter inch, get a uh, XLR to quarter inch. Have that quarter inch go into your focus ride or whatever, whatever piece of equipment you have to keep that chain good. I guarantee you, you will have a studio quality sound no matter what mic you get. Um, what's a good mic cable? Ah, I forgot the one I got. I actually got it from Guitar Center a while back, but I spent like 130 on like a 12 foot cable, and it it makes a difference. It keeps it it make, keeps that signal clean. And just for the little cable that goes from my uh, Avalon into it's like a it's like a one foot cable that I got that goes from my Avalon into my uh, Apollo. That cable was like 40 bucks. Um, that That's that's a good one. Um, Megami cables. Yes, they're good. Yeah. Yeah, they're very good. Um, Monster cables. There's so many cables out of there. All the high-end cables are not the best because there's some low-end cables that are actually pretty cool too. But you want to stick to stuff that people, that like especially going to Amazon or something like that or Sweetwater or Zounds.com. <laughs> you know, Zounds.com where you can go ahead and get a whole bunch of stuff with no credit or background check. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and click that link in the description. Get you some equipment today. But, <laughs> you know, if you want to go to Zounds or wherever you want to go, um, and I do have an affiliate link with Sweetwater too. So if y'all want to get some stuff for Sweetwater, I got a I got a link uh, down there for Sweetwater as well. I think I, I'm not too sure. I'm about to check, but um, but Zounds.com is the place you need to go right now. But uh, <laughs> you can go there and just look up some of the reviews on stuff, or go to Sweetwater, look up some of the reviews. Go to Amazon, look up some of the reviews. Look at the reviews on that, okay? But look at some of the, don't look at the, you know, the cheaper cables. Of course, they're always going to have great reviews of the cheap cables. But look at some of the high-end cables and look at the reviews on that, okay? Look at some of the reviews on that, and that's cool. Um, Jen Wilder, I hope you use my link. 
I hope you use my link when you got them T them T seven V's. Those things actually are very good too. Um, they they're actually very good. Is the audio interface better than the focus right? It's it's pretty it's pretty much off taste, man. Like for real, it's it's off a of taste. It's off a of taste. If you it, you know, like some people use certain boards for a reason. Some people like the SSL board. Some people like the audio board. Some people like the task and some people like different boards. Some people like the Neve boards. They, it's just a different taste, but they're, they're still going to give you, they're still going to give you a, a a decent sound. It's just a different taste, and depending on what you do, you know what I'm saying. But the audience, for what people are saying, they do have better pre's in it, but it does cost a little bit more. I paid, I think I paid three hundred for that a few years ago, and they come with a two year warranty, like a three year warranty. So like. If you have any problems with the audience, you can just send it right back and they'll make sure they take care of it for you. Um, what you said, Chase? I was going to buy the Korg VST, uh, but I just sampled Reason software into an MPC. You could do, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I got the whole Korg uh, VST stuff and everything sounds like the Korg stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I still get the hardware stuff like the, the Nautilus and all like that too. But, um, yeah, you can get you don't have to get very 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 expensive equipment. You can get cheap equipment. It'll be fine. Everything'll be good. You will be okay. Okay? You will be okay. How you feel about the 500 series? Yes, 500 series is very dope. So you can get the same stuff in that 500 series and that way you won't have to have, you know, all that rack mount stuff as well. But the 500 series stuff is actually a very dope alternative as well. I just like when the whole thing is filled up. You know what I'm saying? Some of these little five, you know, some of these come with like five slots and people only have two slots. If you if you're not gonna use that much, just get the, you know, don't don't try to get none. It's got out like, you know, five, six slots, you only got two things and then you have all that open space for dust and all that stuff to get in there. Um have you recorded vocals into an NPC with external preamp? Yeah, heck yeah. I've done it with my twenty five hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds good. It has a grit to it. You know what I'm saying? Sounds a little grit to it. Sound, it, it it's, but it's, it's dope, though. It's something different. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like it has like a different type of a sound to it. It's 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 not bad, though. I, I can't say that. It's not bad. It's not it's not what some people, you know, think. But I would rather just run it through like an actual audio fin interface or something like that. But, yeah, um, doesn't matter what you use. You can use whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk about equipment next time when I come on here. We're going to be talking about uh, the equipment, like the Jupiter X and stuff like that, and why I like using uh, that type of equipment to make beats. Um, what's a 500 series? 500 series is actually the like the small mini compressor. So instead of you having a big rack mount, they can come into small sections, probably like this big, and you can just stick them in like these cases and in that way instead of you paying three thousand dollars for the compressor you can get the compact version of it and it'll be like 900 or 700 you know what i'm saying so uh just look up 500 series go to sweetwater and look up like the 500 series or go to go to zounds.com <laughs> and look up that as well you know what i'm saying but um do you recommend buying books on engineering? No, because every all the information you need to know is right here on the tube. <laughs> you can watch everything right here on the tube. You got to be like people are visual learners. People are visual learners. OK, it's best to visually see and hear what people are doing before you buy a book. I would go get like mixed with the masters or something like that. Pay for a yearly subscription and just watch all the videos on those guys. That way you can try to hear it, you know, like that. Uh, trap or R&B what's your favorite to produce of course trap but my favorite to record is R&B I actually make more trap beats but I record more R&B because um, people like the way I record how fast I get them in and get them out and I when I'm recording I give people suggestions runs certain stacks whatever and we put everything together it doesn't take me long to record R&B records you know what I'm saying it doesn't take me long at all uh, I can produce R&B records you know, because a lot of stuff are using a lot of trap elements into it, a few keys or whatever. But, I, you know, I like to I like to kind of stay in my own little zone 
with that. But then when I record, I record a lot. I record a lot of R&B, which you guys have heard. You guys have heard my mixes on my last couple of videos with the mic test. If you guys haven't watched some of my videos with the mics, you know what I'm saying, with the microphone test, you might want to check it out. You can hear all my mixes and everything like that. Is Focusrite good for beginners? Yes. And it's good for people who are not beginners as well. They're cheap. You can get them for a very low price, and they sound great. And I like the output volume on the focus rights too. They're a little bit louder than the SSL and the uh, Audient. And it's actually a little bit louder than my Apollo. So I like that. You know what I'm saying? I like uh, I like using the uh, Apollo. Uh, I'm not the Apollo. I like using the focus right stuff, especially when I'm on the road. If I'm on the road, I like to take it with me. And uh, I can just plug it into like my iPad or something. And I can run everything off of it. Or I just plug it in. I bring my laptop and just plug it in, and I'm good. Good thing. In, and it has a USB-C cable, so everything is all good. So, uh, yeah, it works It works really good um, like that. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up, man. It was good being on here with you guys today. Thank you guys so much for coming on here. Um, we're going to be talking about more about with the keyboards and the MPC and everything like that. And I'm actually going to redo my live setup. So um, you're going to be seeing me showing a few things. And if you guys got any questions or anything, I'm going to go and set that up. I'm also going to be setting up memberships. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm going to do some memberships so you guys can get some like exclusive content. Like if you guys ask me questions, I will show you guys how I hook my stuff up and do things like that. I'm not going to be doing too many tutorials to the general public. I'm going to do that mostly for like subscriptions and members and stuff like that. That would begin set up. Um, but check me out over on Twitch. If y'all haven't signed up, set, check me out on Twitch. I do most of my beats and, you know, all of my beat videos on that or whatever. Um, <laughs> Tyrone says, have you been playing any new beats for you? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> I'm going to have some more videos about that later on. Um, but, yeah, uh, y'all just make sure to stay tuned with the channel. Share the video if you can. Share this video. Let people know what's going on. Let people know my lives are really dope. I got another video talking about promotion tomorrow. Just, you know, just ch chopping it up. And, uh, yeah, hey, y'all keep supporting me. I'm going to support y'all as best as I can. And, uh, hey, live beat review tomorrow night, probably going to be at 930 tomorrow night. So 930 Eastern live beat review. So y'all better have y'all beats ready. I want to see I want to see all of y'all in here. I want to see the congregation in here tomorrow night so in supporting these producers you know i only be on there for like an hour tops so i try to get everything done so y'all come over and check out that so i appreciate you guys thank you david thank you david cache thank you so much for that i appreciate you guys for coming on here thank you guys for supporting me and i will see you guys on the next live which will probably be either wednesday or possibly friday all right so I'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. And like I always say, peace out.